Luke 12, 22 to 34. As we pull the passage together, the thing that ties it all up is a statement that Jesus makes three times essentially. Verse 22, do not be anxious. And then verse 29, do not keep worrying. And then verse 32, do not be afraid. The Lord Jesus in Scripture at least 12 times is recorded to have said, don't worry, don't be anxious. And he explained why on the occasions in which he said that. Anxiety-free living is part of what the Lord offers. It's part of the gospel message. It is what we have who are in the kingdom. I understand why the, why the world is stressed out. I understand why people are anxious. I understand why they worry. I understand why they have panic attacks. It's frightening to be dangling in this inexplicable universe and feeling all alone and not being able to figure out why you're even here and where you're going. I understand there's a certain cosmic fear. I understand why people take drugs and drink and go on eat eating binges and shopping binges and wild adventures and all kinds of things to uh, fill their minds with uh, other thoughts. We are living in an anxiety-ridden culture. And the amazing thing about it is, this is the most indulged, the most lavish society ever. This is the most comfortable society ever. This is the society that has the most, but it seems to be the most angst-ridden, anxious, stressed out, panicked culture ever. And about 50% of the United States population experiences some kind of psychiatric anxiety disorder. About half of people in America in their life, 100 million are estimated worldwide to have panic attacks. Just out of nowhere to feel a terrible, terrifying panic. Worry is a pretty deadly thing. You know, worry, anxiety, fear it affects the heart, the circulation, the nervous system, the glands, everything else. And so that is precisely what Jesus says you don't need to worry about. In verse 22, he says, don't be anxious for your life. And by that, he means what you eat and your body, what you wear. Stop worrying about that, the basics of life. And then down in verse 32, don't be afraid on the spiritual level, for your Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. You're left with nothing to worry about, nothing to be anxious about, nothing to be stressed about, nothing to panic over. Fear, worry, anxiety is about a lack of faith. So we conclude that if you do worry as a Christian, worry is a sin. But it's a sin that rises from a failure to understand God. A failure to understand His sovereign love, a failure to understand His sovereign care, a failure to understand His sovereign resources. So it is possible that your life is full of fear and anxiety and worry because of ignorance. That can be dispelled simply by reading the Psalms. If you think it's a long course, if you have to go to seminary to get to know God, you're wrong. Just start in Psalm 1 and 150 days later finish Psalm 150 and you will have come to know your God. And of course all the rest can be filled in. But that, that's why we read the Psalms, because we come to worship God and we need to know the God we worship. Jesus does offer anxiety-free living. When you come into His kingdom, God takes care of you, and your worries really are ended. So that what defined your life, worrying about everything, is eliminated. Now you have to understand the promises of God, and you have to understand the purposes of God to come to this worry-free, anxiety-free living. There are several points that I want to unpack for you, and they show that worry rises from a failure to understand something about God. First of all, let's look at the first one. Worry is a failure to understand divine priority. God is the one who feeds the birds. God is the one who arrays the grass in the field. God is the one who knows what you need. God is the one who will give you the kingdom. You just came under the care of God. First Peter 5, 7, casting all your care on Him, He cares for you. And uh, in the words of the Apostle Paul, he said this, chapter 4 of Philippians, verse 11, I learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, of having abundance and suffering. What's the secret? Trusting God. Sometimes you have a lot, sometimes you have a little, but you always have enough. Why? Verse 19, my God shall supply all your what? Needs. It's in God that I live and move and have my being. But God has a purpose for my life. I'm under divine priority. The simple idea is this, folks, get it. For those who are in the kingdom, if God gave you life, and He did, 
If he wants you to live, and he does, if you're alive, if he brought you into his kingdom, and he has, then he has a purpose for you to fulfill in his kingdom, to his glory, and so he will sustain you to that fulfillment. I mean, it wouldn't make any sense for God to say, I will save you, and I will give you eternal life, I'll give you spiritual life, and I have a, a purpose for your life, and a destiny, and a plan, and a purpose, and I've gifted you, and I've called you, and I've laid out circumstances, and man, if you can just keep yourself alive, this will be really good. No. In all honesty, the, the, the people who are not in God's family come and go and live and die with no contribution to the divine kingdom. But those of us who are His are fulfilling divine purpose. As long as He has that unfolding plan in your life, He will sustain it. So you have to understand the priority, right? And the priority is spiritual purpose. If you understand that, if you understand God's gifted you, He's called you, He's regenerated you, He's put you into His family, He's put you into a place of witness and ministry and service, and all He wants you to do is live to His glory, and He will take care of your life. Your life is not about food. Your life is not about clothing. It's not about making sure you can survive. That's God's commitment. And if you understand the divine priority, that is that you live and exist for the purpose of God, and God will sustain your life until that purpose is fulfilled, then you, you don't have to worry about it. Secondly, worry fails to understand divine provision. It fails to understand divine provision. Look at verse 24. For they neither sow nor reap, and they have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than the birds. You don't need to spend your life worrying about whether you're going to have enough, whether you're going to have enough now, whether you're going to have enough when you retire, whether you're going to have enough in the future. Your God promises to sustain you to the end of His purpose. Thomas Watson said, this life is like an inn. You spend a couple of nights there, but you never forget where your home is. The third point, worry is a failure to understand God's privilege. Verse 25. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? If then, verse 26, you cannot do even a very little thing, why are you anxious about other matters? What is this about? This is about the idea that somehow you control the length of your life. Life is from God. He gives it. He sustains it. He makes provision for it. You do not have the privilege to determine your lifespan. Who does? Uh, the Lord gives, the Lord takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worry isn't going to lengthen your life because the one who has the privilege to determine when you were born and when you die is the sovereign God. So what do you want to do? Don't worry. You belong to Him. He knows the priority is for you to serve Him. He makes provision so that that priority can be fulfilled and He determines just exactly how long He wants that to go on. If you belong to Him, He takes care of you until His work for you is finished. Number four, worry is a failure to understand divine preference. Do you understand God's preference? God prefers you. You don't really think He's going to put that kind of a garment on a flower and not cover you when He wants you to accomplish His purpose, and you're His own beloved children. If He made such lavish beauty to clothe plants that die in days and have no spiritual value, how much more will He take care to clothe the crown of His creation, the bride of His beloved Son, whom He has elected? And there's a fifth principle, and we'll, we'll close with this one today. Worry is a failure to understand God's paternity. Don't you understand that God is your Father? Verse 30 and 31, for all these things the nations of the world eagerly seek, but your Father knows that you need these things. God has a priority for us. He will make provision to see that priority fulfilled. He is the one who has the privilege to determine how long we live. He prefers us because He is our Father. What delights God? The same thing that delights a father, to provide for the children He loves.
recorded to have said, don't worry, don't be anxious. And he explained why on the occasions in which he said that. Anxiety-free living is part of what the Lord offers. It's part of the gospel message. It is what we have who are in the kingdom. I understand why the, why the world is stressed out. I understand why people are anxious. I understand why they worry. I understand why they have panic attacks. It's frightening to be dangled. Do not be anxious. And then verse 29, do not keep worrying. And then verse 32, do not be afraid. The Lord Jesus in Scripture at least 12 times is re Luke 12, 22 to 34. As we pull the passage together, the thing that ties it all up is a statement that Jesus makes three times, essentially. Verse 22. 